Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Martin Ramsey. I'm the managing director of the LAMP Consortium, and my job is to facilitate the uh, second lightning talks that we're going to do during the Sakai Virtual Conference. So this is round two. We have uh, four lovely presentations queued up. And um, as you know from the, the first session this morning, they go fast and furious. Um, my job will be to make sure that nobody goes over their allotted time. Everybody gets nine minutes. And if you go over nine minutes, I'll reach out through the internet and somehow get you. Uh, so <laughs> just kidding. Uh, we're, we're really excited to hear what we have uh, lined up for us. So we're going to start with Jordan Lott out in California at Pepperdine. And he's going to be talking about training anytime. Jordan, take it away. It's yours. Hey, everybody. Um, let me get my screen started. And I'll take it away. Well, thank there you, you go. all. Um, really excited to be here today. I want to tell you a little bit about what, um, not my, my team that focuses on uh, faculty, but my other group that uh, I work with called IT Training that focuses on staff training and how we're using the LMS system uh, to make this, uh, flexible training options for our staff members. So a little bit about our group. I want to give a little background since it is a little bit different than uh, uh, some of the other uses of, you know, our colleagues here today. Um, so this started off as a, an, our, my team started off as a collaboration between IT and our finance department, in fact. Um, so there was a need for technology training for a system that you couldn't just pick up and figure out. There, you know, there were walkthrough guides, but it needed some, some guided uh, inst uh, instructor-led training opportunities for it. So out of that came four different training opportunities that um, the IT department developed with our finance colleagues for incredibly thrilling topics like credit card substantiation and reallocation and uh, travel and expense reports. Um, so, you know, content that's like really thrilling and engaging, it, it's, it's, it's pretty dry. Um, but we needed something available to our staff members. Um, so that developed for a, a number of years. And as time progressed, obviously, you know, as technology is becoming more and more of the, the daily expectation for our staff members, there was a continual growing need for new training opportunities. And so that developed into the IT training group in about 2017. Um, and so we added things like Google Workspace and web conferencing essentials and digital signatures, onboarding expectations. So the IT training expectations kept growing. Um, and, and just like our colleagues at Pepperdine, it focuses on small in-person training. Um, so as you all imagine, COVID changed a lot of that, went to remote. Um, still that need for training was there. So, but it allowed for, you know, some changes within our group and with our department um, and so that online, you know, that in-person small group really changed to more of a focus on online options and hybrid options. Um, and as our teams continue to transition and have some uh, a little bit of turnover, um, we needed more opportunities for people to still get these incredibly exciting training opportunities, um, even when we didn't have uh, uh, trainers available in that moment. Um, these were can't miss training opportunities because you can't just figure out how to do it. It's very specific with a lot of details about how you must fill out certain things. Um, and so that has now shifted a little bit more about how we change things to add self-paced flexibility, um, allowing people to have something more than just a webinar. Um, we wanted to create those asynchronous options. So again, not, not, we're not groundbreaking in terms of, um, asynchronous training for staff, that kind of thing. That's been around for a long time. But for things that we wanted to make sure um, absolutely were available to people. And I think there is- Jordan, can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah. Can you, uh, I don't know if there's a way that you can boost your volume. We're, we're getting several people saying it's you're a little bit quiet. Got it. There we go. That's um, better. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful. I've changed nothing, but I'm glad that- Well, no, good. it was there for a second. So- Somehow you're where your voice was. Sorry, I don't mean uh, to take your time, but no just problem. okay. I hope I hope I'm audible. Um, okay, so what we did from there is we wanted to make those opportunities um, uh, more flexible for people. So we started to build out some of our own options in house, starting first with our very first version of this. Um, I want to recognize that this first version was filling an urgent need. 
Um, and it was done by technology trainers, not instructional designers. So there was a lot of legwork on the front end just to get something that was usable when we didn't have trainers available to people. So we started off with a few different ideas here, um, getting into a welcome, a getting started, as well as our learning modules. And you'll see they're very text heavy. Um, there's some probably too much navigation up here at the top. We really focused on just making sure that content was delivered. Um, we wanted to push people towards uh, trying it out, you know, having a list of things they could try. A few times where we've got uh, images that are, are um, holding text inside of them. So here's an example. That's not a table. That unfortunately is an image. Um, and so while it was helping, it was a problem because it was not accessible and not okay for us to continue using. So we started getting some feedback. We wanted to try and see where we can make those improvements um, as, as trainers, um, things that they could be learning. Um, and so we went with our newer version that we were asking for feedback from people. And they were talked about simpler navigation. They wanted more video. They wanted some interactivity since they weren't in that live environment and didn't get a chance to try and do that with other people. So we looked for opportunities there as well as more ways to get the word out. Um, this first version was by request only. Um, and so we're looking for ways that we can make that a little bit better. So we started to tack on some new improvements for this, uh, for this particular training. So this is version number two. And as you can see right away, much simpler um, uh, navigation on the left side, reduced down the number of windows that people could be interacting with. Um, once we get there, we did combine all three of our starting uh, items into one single starting point. We then had all of our modules linked off from here. Um, this allowed for um, Im improved interaction. Um, we had some more visual elements that gave a little bit more appeal better designed, we, we worked with our colleagues in our technology and learning department, um, the other group that I oversee that does have instructional designers to come up with some new ideas for how we can approach things. So we incorporated more video content. And anytime we did, we made sure that we had alternate links available to people. Um, we took a higher, uh, a, a better approach to our tables. If we had them, making sure that we didn't have any images that were all text. <laughs> If we did have that, make sure we have a link somewhere else to it. Um, all of our videos were, were better captioned and making sure that that was available to people. Um, and then as well as adding some interactive elements. Um, so this is gonna be very similar to uh, a Zerte type tool. Um, we ended up using something called H5P. But throughout, as we were developing these, wanted to make sure that we were adding video, adding interaction, um, and adding more opportunities for people to learn and grow. Um, now, the outcome of this has been highly positive. We've done this for all four of our training, um, our, our four finance tools that we provide training for. Um, but we were noticing some interesting new pieces to the puzzle. Um, we had kind of three buckets of people where people were landing in. If they took the training, they finished it quickly, and they were done with it. They were on to the next thing. We had a second bu bucket of people that had requested it and had gotten a little bit into it just based on some of our statistics and hadn't gotten to finish. And we have a smaller number of people that had, hadn't even started, hadn't even opened the link that they were uh, uh, asking to join. Um, so from here, we have some next steps, questions that we're gonna start trying to address. Um, how do we make this easier on my teams to administrate this? Because this was by request only, we were having to do a lot of manual addition of people we were doing a lot of follow-up, email confirmations, um, and we're uh, considering that we may approach it to allowing any user to join the site. And so we can make it a linkable option on a web page. Um, we figure motivated learners are motivated. Um, it, well, the feedback that we got was, if people are gonna take it because they need it for their job, do we need to keep emailing them continually to ask, hey, how's it going? How's the training? Do you have any questions? They'll reach out if they have it. We want to add additional interactive elements and then uh, additional updates to our videos as the tools change. Um, so that's how we're approaching it with our staff members. Again, this is a, a newer initiative, um, but it's one that we've been pretty happy with and uh, people have given us some positive feedback 
once completed. So I think I have a few seconds left to see if there are any questions uh, from the group. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. That's good. Questions for, for Jordan right quick. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep things moving here. Next up, we have Chris Knapp, who's a good friend to many of us. He's going to talk about um, accessibility improvements, and he's going to take a page out of the uh, the earlier session's book, and we're going to actually play a video, but he's there live. I can see him, and he'll answer your questions after the video's done. So, Wilma, you're going to play the video, right? Yep, I'm starting it up now. Okay, thank you. So my lightning talk is going to be less about new accessibility features and more about specific tools and features in Sakai 23 that have been well thought out and either designed or redesigned and developed with accessibility in mind. Well, time is of the essence, so let's get right to it. So first on my list is the new Trinity UI and portal. Now, one of the things I like about the new Trinity user interface is how I can easily tab to the view all sites option. And then it's just a couple of more tabs to the create site option, which is something that I use all the time during testing when I have to create new course sites. I also like how I can easily tab to the profile tool, which again is something that I have to do all the time during testing as I often have to log out and log back in as different users. So next on my list is conversations. So I included this on my list because accessibility has been a focus since the very beginning. And the team that's been working on conversations has had us test and retest this tool during every stage of its development. I'm also including the new Sakai Plus feature on my list for similar reasons. When Dr. Chuck made his initial commit of Sakai Plus to master back in December, we were some of the first members of the QA team to perform testing on the tool. And I'm happy to say that of the 216 test cases that were performed, we had a 100% pass rate in terms of the manual functional verification testing. All right, so now I wanna demo some stuff for you. So next I wanna talk about the new and improved calendar widget date picker feature. So up until recently, the calendar widget date picker tool was something that you couldn't interact with using the keyboard. But starting with Sakai 23, and since we were able to then backport it to Sakai 22, keyboard screen reader users like myself are now able to interact with and use this feature. So the best way I can show you this is if I do Alt-C here to jump down to the main content area of the Alt -C, gradebook jump tool. Alt-C, jump to grad tool if list, I tab imports, down to permissions, settings, add gradebook item add button, gradebook item. enter, Sakai colon penthist one colon gradebook document, Sakai colon penthist one colon gradebook dash Google Chrome dialog, title edit, blank, if I type in a title, H-O-M-E double R-S-P-3, and then tab, point value edit, and add one, point value, zero, X, due date edit, and then if blank. I tab here, so this uh, due date field is an editable text field. Now, normally I could just type in the due date using the preferred dating convention. Um, and if I was to tab off of this, I would then land on the calendar widget date picker icon. But again, up until recently, I wasn't able to interact with that using the keyboard. But now if I tab and press enter on that, which I'll do here. Unlander combo box nav. Now here I'm in the month option and I can actually use my up down arrow keys to then change the value. So let's down arrow and I can change this to December. Combo box deck. And then if I tab again. Combo box 2023. Here's the year. And if I tab again, I'll actually go into the calendar Table, display. Table, column six, row two, FR, one link. And saw, keep two link, tabbing two, through this. Three link, mo, four link, column so here two. I'm on Monday the 4th, and if I want to select this, I just press enter. Enter, Sakai colon pen and if one, I tab Sak, here. Title edit, home, point value, text, due date edit, 12 slash 04 slash 2023. So here, uh, December 4th, 2023 has been added to the due date field. So in other Sakai tools and features where um, you're also able to add the time, uh, you have the option of using these plus and minus buttons to either increase or decrease the hour and minute values. Uh, but again, here in the gradebook, add uh, gradebook item option, it's just a due date. So it's not really the case here. Create so, cancel, enter, so I'll go ahead and cancel out of that. Escape. So finally, I just want to talk about some new features in the gradebook tool for Sakai 23, uh, starting with this quick entry tool. This is something that was developed by the folks over at the University of Dayton. And to get to this, if I do Alt-C again Alt -C, here, content tool list with import slam, quick entry tab link, quick entry. Quick entry tool here. Enter. Sakai colon one 
Heading level heading level two content. Heading level two quick entry quickly set grades and comments for a single grade book item using the form below. You can navigate between the fields on the page using tab, enter, or your keyboard zero keys. Heading level three grade book item colon combo separator. All right, so you heard Jaws uh, describing the quick entry tool, and then you have this combo box combo here. Combo box collapsed, select grade book item. And if I do alt open down list arrow, box, main region, list I with three items. Homework one, homework from, two. Uh, grade book, any available grade book items within my grade book. So let's go ahead and choose homework two. Enter grade book item colon sites heading site, heading level three pin no pin sites yet heading heading left. Heading level two, quick entry, quickly set grade. You can navigate heading combo step heading head set score for fill M table with student grade comment. Excuse Newton five left parent student so fifty four seventy one right student. parent. And if I tab main region grade edit blank column two row two actually enter the grade for the student one zero. And then if I tab again comment edit blank column three. I can actually add a great uh, comment. P-A-R-G-E, exclaim, great job, fine, excused, checkbox not checked, here column I can check four. this if I wanted to excuse the grade for this individual, but from here I can then down arrow, Schwartz and Towski, Bobo left here's the next student, student. grade, edit, blank, I column tab, two, row three. Next grade. So you get the idea. So this is really nice when you're first entering grades into the grades data table. Uh, but it's also really nice when you need to go back and adjust grades or change comments. And for uh, keyboard screen reader users, it's just nice to have this alternative method for performing that type of a function. So let me go ahead and close out of this here. Great comment. Update. Reset. Cancel. Enter. All right. So, escape. so the final thing I want to do is show you um, how the accessibility for the drop down menus for the grade book. Uh, items in the grades data table has improved. So if I jump down here into the grades data table, Alt C main region view item or bulk edit list end table page dot table and open open ten open up link level link with open menu for student Dick Vermin and assignment homework two cell button menu collapsed. All right, so here I'm on one of these drop down menus for a grade book item, and the way that this used to work was uh, keyboard screen reader users would have to press enter or space bar to expand the menu. And then you'd have to tab a bunch of times and you would end up actually tabbing down through the contents of the footer before you would actually get to the different options for that particular menu. So now I expand or collapse this by, you know, pressing space bar, enter again. Enter, enter, collapse, enter, expanded. So you hear it say expanded. But now instead of having to tab a bunch of times, I can use my up down arrow keys and I can get to those options. List with three items. Grade log link. Link at slash edit comment. Excellent. So Chris, there was a lot of chat uh, going on while while that video was playing. And I, I think, well, I'll, I'll just speak for myself. I've I have a, a blind friend who uses a, a, a screen reader, but seeing somebody actually use Sakai like that was quite impressive. So I'll just kudos to you. But um, what questions do people have for for Chris? This is a real opportunity you have here. They've all gone quiet. <laughs> You've you've blown them away. <laughs> well, yeah, and hopefully just gives people a little bit of a flavor as to to what that experience is using, uh, you know, assistive technology with Sakai. It's it's uh, definitely something that uh, we take seriously, and um, there's a bunch of different people that contribute to um, all of our accessibility efforts. Um, we have a group of blind and low vision uh, individuals who are part of a nonprofit organization called Vision Aid, uh, which is an Indian based organization. Um, but then we also have, uh, you know, a number of people on our QA team. We had uh, the students at Marist did a bunch of screen reader testing for us on uh, Sakai uh, 22. And uh, of course, all the developers, you know, it, it's just been a complete team effort. Yeah, it's it's and and it gives you a real appreciation for why this is so important. So that's that's kind of good. So I'd like to amplify one one thing Chris said, sort of blowing by in path passing. And at some point, Chris was talking about Sakai Plus, and he sort of said the first people who did QA on Sakai Plus once it came in 
we're we're blind and low vision people and and a lot of organizations like think of accessibility as a thing you do later to get a piece of paper right to yeah. get a certificate um because we have integrated into our entire community blind and low vision people um they just do stuff i mean that wasn't necessarily you know it wasn't like time to do an accessibility thing we just have blind and low vision people or people using techniques like blind and low vision to just do QA in general. Do it right from the get go. Yeah. Right in the middle. And, the, and, and so it, it's, uh, you know, accessibility and it's sometimes when you're developing software, the earlier you get the kind of feedback, the quicker and easier it is to get those things right. right. And so, uh, so that Chris just said that kind of in passing, like blind and low vision people were the first people in Chris, I'll let you, I'll stop and let you add something if you want. Well, yeah, if I had a 70-minute lightning talk, I may have expounded on that a little bit more. It wouldn't be a lightning talk. It would be a full storm. (laughs) (laughs) But speaking of which, I've got to move on. (laughs) because That was a great presentation. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was really good. Appreciate it, Chris. All right, next we're going to go to uh, Holland. i assuming that you're in Holland right now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Good evening okay. yeah. <laughs> from all. Yeah, that's right. Good evening. And, and <laughs> yeah. Inge Donkovert is going to talk to us about uh, Zerti. So take it away, Inge. Thank you, Martin. First, I want to say, Chris, it was very impressive. And we know how important this is. And uh, with the Zerti community, I'm from Zerti, uh, accessibility is one of the uh, most important things. So we test everything on accessibility and on screen readers. So uh, keep on g- uh, doing the good work, uh, uh, but now I start with my own uh, lightning talk. Um, I'm going to talk to you about Zerti and Sakai. Um, and I'm giving a presentation. Um, Zerti is very um, uh, a very big tool. You can do a lot of things with it. And I'm only going to show you one thing and a few examples. Um, Zerti is an authoring tool and uh, where you can create media-rich, accessible, um, interactive, uh, online modules with. Um, some of you already seen it and you can do uh, a lot of things with it. You can create escape rooms, you can create, you can use variables, you can create all kinds of interactivities, you can create mini websites and go on. Um, uh, it's a very uh, long list. In Zerti, you have two uh, sort of templates. There are more, but two most important. And that is XOT, that stands for Xeta Online Toolkits Template. And that's where you can create interactivities um, on pages behind each other. Um, and you can add quizzes, hotspots, uh, 360 image trees, etc. And you can use the bootstrap, and that's more a mini website that's more used for um, uh, manuals, uh, newsletters, that kind of things. Um, it's very easy to share those uh, tem- uh, modules when you uh, created them. You can y- share them with an hyperlink in uh, every learning environment. Uh, you can use an embed code. You can use LTI. We use Chuggy from uh, Dr. Chuck. Um, we have X- XAPI enabled and um, uh, SCORE. What's good to know is it is an authoring tool, accessibility already called uh, said. Open source, um, you can create a lot of open uh, resources for open education um, and share it with other organizations that can reuse it. Um, it's learning platform independent. It's great with Sakai. And at the moment, we are working on uh, AI and chat GPT added to Zerti. Um, I'm not going to explain all this page, but it's in Dutch. It's all Dutch examples, but if you want, you can take a look later what you can create with Zerti. One I will pick out, and that's the 360 image. Um, hey, this Inga, is from... before you move on, can I interrupt? Yeah. I think you think you're sharing your screen and you're not. Oh, okay. I just realized you're referring to things that we're not seeing. Oh, how so terrible. Click share screen and then we'll be, then take off. <laughs> Shall I start again? No, yo, <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> it, it made so much sense, but it's better now that we see pictures. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, let me start here. This is what I said to the Dutch examples. When you click on those uh, images, you get an example. And I'm only going to show you on this page this one. And this is an uh, example made by Delteon College. Um, 
it's it's in Dutch, but if you add it in your uh, browser and you uh, use the translation, uh, you can see it in English as well. Um, it's just a few pages. It's sort of micro learning. So I'm going uh, to start. Uh, I get some uh, um, uh, questions and some information, and then um, I'm going to practice it. And when I'm practicing, I have the 360 image, and on those 360 image, I have questions um, and um, interactivities, or I can have uh, a map with information. So I can do all kinds of interactivities on the practice side from this uh, course. I'm going to show you some more examples. Let me see. Yeah. Um, this is an example. This is in English. So also here you can uh, walk around in this beautiful castle in England. And one of the things you also can do, and it's more a bit escape room uh, like, you can have um, a lock and then you have to find somewhere in this picture the uh, the password to, can, to go on. And I can also go um, a bit further, wandering further in the castle and go to the next image and also walk around there. So that's the 360 image, and that's only one page of the 75 page types that are in Xerti. This is another one. This is on a, in a school uh, where they want to teach nurses um, or people that want to work in the hospital um, how uh, or in the um, pharmacy, how it's looking in the pharmacy. So um, you see a cabinet. When I press the uh, link, then opens the drawer can't close it. I can walk around again. I can, can go to another room. And so I can prepare the students on what they are going to see in the pharmacy um, when they are working there. So also I have here an uh, interactivity. Um, but everything is um, in uh, the way that they are going to work in when they are um, working in a pharmacy. I have another example, and that's this one. This is a school, and this is more for onboarding for students. This is also the Deltion College in the Netherlands. Um, so you can walk through the school and see what's where in this school. And as you saw, when I started this 360 image, you can start uh, uh, to, with automatic rotating, it's called. And so it's doing it automatic, or you can do it by hand. Um, I have for you the link also to this um, uh, um, module, but I will give it later. Um, very short about embedding it or using it in Sakai. I have a few few slides here, uh, how you can do it. You can add it to lessons and to assignments. You can um, use LTI or just use the link. Um, then you have the the module embedded, or you can use it in a new template, a uh, new tab. Um, you can have uh, automatically the results back into the gradebook. And in the end, um, you have a Xerti dashboard where you can see how the students, what they do and uh, what their results were. Then uh, if you want to have this a learning object, and I will put it also in the slide share uh, from uh, Sakai from this conference. But you can take a look. It's not made for the phone, so you can best view it on the um, laptop. And if you have any questions, please ask me or ask me later. So, oh, just like that. Oh. <laughs> yes, I'm ready. It was seven minutes. Yeah, you, you did very well. <laughs> So uh, we should just make clear that Xerti is this external tool that integrates so beautifully with Sakai and has this rich capabilities for uh, learning experiences that can be integrated into all the other tools inside Sakai. So exactly. what questions do people have? Uh, there's a question. Do we have a test platform that we can play with? That's a difficult one, isn't it? Yeah, um, it is. It's in Dutch, uh, but um, maybe I don't know, Wilma, if you uh, still have a test platform platform in uh, in the UK, uh, US. Um, we do still have our Xerti server up. Um, so uh, if you're interested, email me, and I'll see if I can get you a, a test account to play with. 
and others uh, you can email me and i can uh, give you a test account as well yeah there you go okay good well i think we need to stay in holland but we need to go to the other guy uh so it's <laughs> It's time to to let Tom take over. Tom Reinders is also with uh, D D Learning uh, in the Netherlands, but he's going to talk about a different aspect of Zerti, exploring LTI deep linking within uh, Zerti. So, Tom, are you ready to take it away, sir? Yes, I am. Okay, go for it. Thank you, Martin. Um, I'll start by sharing my screen. Can you all see it? It's coming. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to give a presentation in the sense that I have prepared a presentation. I'm going to do a demo. Um, uh, I don't know uh, how many of you know Zerti. Uh, Inge showed you the, uh, the student side. Uh, this is the author side that you see now. So basically, you have an environment where you can create all these projects uh, that Inge uh, showed you. And um, uh, we added LTI capabilities by, integrated, uh, by integrating uh, Tsugi, another Aperio project, uh, into Zerti. And uh, the uh, so for if you have a, a learning object, uh, it's not automatically uh, shared by uh, uh, oh, uh, LTI enabled. You have to enable that. Uh, so for normally, if you start with a project, it, it's private and not shared. Um, but if you go into the properties, <coughs> yeah, you can go to the LTI settings. And there uh, you are able to publish a tool uh, and uh, use the global configured keys and secrets. If you use the globally, uh, the globally configuration is just by entering uh, the Sugi admin panel. And uh, so if you have an LTI uh, 1.3 advantage uh, uh, connection, you set it up in the Sugi admin panel integrated in Zerti and then make the connection to Sakai. It's really easy because you have a, a, a quick setup uh, link provided by Tsugi, and you can use that in Sakai. The problem with the current uh, implementation is that Tsugi treats the whole Zerti environment as one tool. Um, and so that means that I have to do something. I have to do, uh, so if I'm in Sakai, and uh, add some content, uh, for example, an external tool, and I go to Zerti, then uh, uh, normally I end up uh, in the store, uh, but the store is not implemented. Uh, so there is, there are, is no deep linking capability built in uh, because the, the whole Zerti installation is treated as, as one tool. So I need to be able to indicate what uh, project I want to see here. Uh, this is the current uh, release version. So and the way how to do that is that you go into your uh, uh, Zerti install and go to the properties of a learning object and go to the LTI tab and it will show you the uh, an LTI launch URL. And if you copy that and you go back to Sakai, and then you can copy that in here and, and you're done. This works, uh, uh, it works, uh, and, uh, but the drawback and the problem is that uh, it's a kind of cumbersome. Uh, you need to have access to Zerti, uh, you need to have access to the, 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 the object, the learning object that you want to place. Um, and worse, uh, uh, not, not uh, Sakai, uh, well, it depends a bit on the admin. Uh, the admin has the possibility to, to hide the launch URL and to hide the possibility to set custom parameters. And then you're not able to play Zerti at all. Um, and other LMSs, uh, specifically its learning, uh, uh, do not allow you to change the launch URL that, that the admin has set up. So what I did in a experimental environment is set up the possibility to have deep linking enabled. So what I've done 
is that uh, the information, uh, the, this installation knows which uh, learning objects obviously are LTI enabled. Uh, so what I've done is uh, make a slight changes in, in, in my uh, environment, my development environment, and made it possible uh, to uh, let Tsugi show me all the learning objects that are LTI enabled. Wow. And I can pick one. Well, it's uh, it it clearly uh, it it needs a lot of work because I I would really would like to be able to filter here and search on the learning object that doesn't work yet. What I can do is fake it a bit. I can I can use the search tool of the browser, uh, and then it will find the learning object that I'm looking for. Say install. Uh, this looks a bit strange. I don't know why. It's a very old installation of Tsugi. I think it's it's because of that. It's uh, an installation of Tsugi of March 22, and a lot has changed since then. Um, and now the tool is available in Sakai, um, uh, which is a lot easier than we did before. And let's see whether it works. That would be neat. Uh, I don't. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Don't forget the title. Maximum points. Oop. Sorry about that. And it works. Hmm. And that's it for me. <laughs> Just like that. And and people are looking out for you. They're, they said, oh, you got to set a title. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yes. That's, yes. that's very cool. <laughs> Excellent. Questions for, for Tom? Miguel says, super cool. Good. In his best Spanish. <laughs> okay. Well, that wraps it up for this round of Lightning Talks. And again, I want to encourage you, use the Sakai uh, site where this the Sakai Virtual Conference is, is being hosted to find in, more information from each other. Um, you can find the presentations that were done. You can find the resources that were provided. Uh, download those. Uh, interact with the presenters follow up with each other. We build a community here and there are lots and lots of faces on my screen right now. It's it's quite exciting. Just I know many of you, I don't know all of you um, and people are just all over the world and it's it's just a it's an exciting community to be a, a part of. So I encourage you to just continue to participate, interact with each other, learn from each other, ask each other questions. Um, and thank you particularly to the presenters for sharing what you are willing to share today. It's uh, really, really helpful. So with that, I think, Wilma, we are done with the second lightning talk. I think I feel a shock coming on. And, uh, <laughs> shocking. Yeah, shocking. <laughs> yeah, um, so this this uh, wraps up our second round of the lightning talks. Um, and just about perfect on timing because we have two minutes left in our time slot. So um, our next session will start in, at uh, 2.40. So in eight, well, 19... No, 11 minutes, sorry, <laughs> 11 minutes from now. Um, and we are going to have two back-to-back -back sessions on Sakai and AI. The first one is going to be um, William McClure from U Dayton. He's going to um, show us what he's been working on, um, exploring chat GPT. And then um, we have a, another presentation right after that from Dr. Chuck, um, chat GPT and Sakai, a love story. So, um, so those should be great. I'm looking forward to both of those. And that's going to be starting in just about 10 minutes. Um, so hopefully we will see you there. Thanks again to all our Lightning Talk presenters. You guys did a great job. Thank you so much. Fabulous.